Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. On to the last trial of the game, everybody. Stuff's going down. Stuff is going down today. It's back for more Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright, Rise from the Ashes. We're on the final day, trial former. Let's begin. The only thing that will make this better is if someone comes back from the dead. <laughs> Literally like Rise from the Ashes. February 25th, 9.47 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is the Defendant Lobby, alright. But there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Alana all morning. Where could she be? Where's Emma? And where is Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777777777 ID number is? Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there is still room for doubt on this ID record. If that number does belong to the whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling on the defendant. Five minutes after the trial starts, Lana will be found guilty. What is this, Von Karma? But she didn't do it! Edgeworth has to go to a spa day. <laughs> yep. I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here. To hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid! Today's the last day of the trial! We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. That's right, Edgeworth. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Uh, but where's Emma? February 25th, 10 a.m., District she Court, courtroom number questioning. 9. Did, like, Gant knock her out? That's my guess. Uh-oh. <laughs> that would be bad. Well, no, he talked to her, right? Yeah. He call Did he call her or something? She's well, he's like, like oh, stay in my office, I want a word with you, and then he sent her for to the police for questioning, basically. Did, like, Emma tell Phoenix Wright, like, oh, I'm going to police for questioning. Or I don't know. <laughs> or if Gant, okay. Because it could be like Gant's just like, she's going to the police for questioning. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, that's possible. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. No. Chief Gant. Where are. Oh. Wow, you materialized! That's amazing! Morning, folks! How's everybody doing? Hey, Aji, been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as is in my work. Oh, that's a good one! Don't think I can top that! Uh-huh. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Yeah? Lana, that is to say, the defendant has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Um. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and then I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No! Lana! I swear, it's all this blackmail. Yep. You can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But why not? Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to the attorney. 
The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. The court finds the defendant. Someone's gonna run in. Objection! One moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? What, like you? He ain't taking any of this. <laughs> I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes? Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Well, yeah, no kidding. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Yeah, but guess who was the one who gave him <laughs> <a> false evidence? <laughs> right. <laughs> hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue- I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. Woo! That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy, you'll live to regret this. Mark my words. He's already gonna be fired. Like, I He's mean... resigning already. He's yeah. just like, I don't give a crap. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Woo! Is she there? Okay, she's alive! Woohoo! That's good. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. Pies. Oh wait, no, no, that's not pies. That's just my screen. <laughs> that's just my screen. It's dirty. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Whoops. Please, I'm like, what are you talking about? The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Witness testimony two years ago. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw that instant! The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. See? You said it was from the back! The, I said it was the autopsy report says, the says from the back. Right. <laughs> uh, that's why I was like, this is bogus. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. <laughs> Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. <laughs> Shoot, it's all on us! 
Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, Cross examination two years ago. I love how they're still like, <laughs> like at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they're kind of on the same side. All right. Well, we gotta press everything. Because we can in this game. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under Chief Detective Gant. My sister. She was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Chief Detective Gant and Miss Skye used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. And dream about playing that organ. <laughs> but Gant keeps it locked up. <laughs> How do you lock up an organ? Put a padlock <laughs> on the keyboard. Put a padlock on the keyboard. You're like... That would make sense. I wanted to play it that day, too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. See, that's how you get someone to come to your work. Just be, yeah, we'll go to Red Robin afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Again, d d is Red Robin in Europe? I don't think so. This is Japanifornia. This is Japanifornia. Of course there's Red Robin. Oh, oops. There's no, no. There's no Red Robins in Japan. Or, or not but in Japanifornia. Japan, in, I don't even think there are in California. The ones, that, the ones that are near our family shut down. Oh, weird. Yeah. Yes, Joe Dark. He was a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky in Gant's office. Wait, why would he go up? Mm, that's where the elevator's going. That's where. Do, does that mean someone else was in the elevator going up? Because, uh, okay, maybe. the way how elevators work is you walk in, you press the button, and it goes where you want to go. It could be like it was on the lobby floor and someone from higher up called it, and then he pushed the button as well or something. Maybe Gant then... called it. <laughs> he, Gant was questioning him in the room. So oh, that's true. Gant not. was not there. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. What? Don't do that! At least look. She didn't know it was a door. serial killer, though. That's true. But, like, if there's a lot of, like, noise and crashing, I'll just kind of be like, mm. And if there's, like, the... Every office, I feel like, has, like, the... Or, no, not an office, but, like, an apartment or whatever has, like, the little key thing you can see through. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be on but the But that office wouldn't be on the door. office door. Right. That's when I saw him. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. Detective Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh, so Lana was... Gant was there too? Neil Marshall had just received the Keen of Prosecutors Award. Then where's Lana in all this? Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. Uh, Lana was somewhere. I don't know. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I... I thought I was as good as dead. Ugh. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... That's understandable. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then the lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Hear more, stop. I mean, hear more. <laughs> Poor Emma. These memories are really torturing her. She's been through enough already. Thank you, Emma. You don't have to go into that. Now then, please tell us. This scene that imprinted an image in your mind, can you please describe it to us? Man. Alright. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes. That's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yeah, but... 
At the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Hope she still has it. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. Ask about the picture. <laughs> I think this will just be the same thing. Yeah, alright. This picture the witness drew, <laughs> I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. But someone has the list. Wait, do we still have the list? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we stole like everything out of his office. We stole office. everything! He's just like, oh, you can just leave, can it's just fine. It? Yeah. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Y yes, your honor. I drew a picture of this picture once. Or, oh, I didn't realize it was new. I drew a picture! I drew Thanks, a picture. Lot of Heart. <laughs> I drew a picture! I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Well, yeehaw! Let's check this out. I didn't realize it was a new statement. Yeah. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes. I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now. Whenever I close my eyes... That's strange. I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died, yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken? But, but I did draw it! I swear! I'm not just imagining it. Draw it again! This picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. Well, anyway, let's continue. Can we check the evidence? The scene was imprinted in... I want to see the... I want to see the... I want to see the... Stroke. I want to see this. Alright. Examine. Oh, we can't ex... Ooh. Ha! <laughs> okay. A picture is drawn on the back of the evidence list in magic marker. I've got a very bad feeling about this. Sweet. That scene that imprinted an image in your mind. Can you please describe it to us? The man... The man raised up a knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. I don't know what we can pre where we press, but... Oh no, it seems to have been lost. That's where we'll press. That must have been a real shock. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. Tell I mean, that's us. like Edgeworth. What were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dark was holding you hostage. When lightning struck and the lights went out, Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. I was thrown aside and two, the two began wrestling each other. I mean, good thing you were thrown aside. Yeah. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie. But Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much about this as she can. Alright, so you're saying present the picture on this one? Yeah. Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture, and yet you still insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy! All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! 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 <laughs> This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident? Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Ah! What's this? My pride and joy. <laughs> yes, what is that? Hey! That's it! That's the picture I drew! At least she looks happy. She's got nice boots. Indeed, two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These uh, lists... I stole it! <laughs> they're... they're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? WHAT?! Order, order! Who'd have thought the picture would have been drawn on the back of the list? That was handed to Detective Goodman in the questioning room. 
Or that was said yep. in the writ room? Yep. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor? Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. Ooh. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. Did he really never turn the list over even once when he had it? I find that hard it to believe. It fell on the ground, right? That was the paper? The He's, he had it for two years, though. I don't know. That's weird. It's possible. Let's see. Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor. There's something drawn on the back of my list. This is that thing! Was the blue badger around? That's that that fiend. That fiend that was dancing in the evidence room. Apparently, the head of criminal affairs used this for his blueprint. I guess he was out of scrap paper. The evidence list has been updated. <laughs> Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she saw that picture. Witness testimony, Emma's picture. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. She saw shadows? Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark was about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. What? I wonder if it was, like, mirrored or something. Because it's shadows. If she only saw shadows, she wouldn't be able to tell who's who. Particularly. Right. So it could be like one was killing the other, and then they just both killed each other. Well, Dark wasn't killed that incident. He was executed after. He oh, was he was convicted. executed afterwards. Oh, okay. yeah. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the detective team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge, under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Two or three days later. The memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? Flash of lightning was so bright, all she could see were the shadows. So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, it must have fainted. You mean, you didn't see the actual murder take place? No. I'm sorry. I'm glad she didn't. <laughs> the flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw that instant. There's... What? There are exclamation points on there. That, that shows our health. Okay. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course! This is, ex this is the exact scene! If it wasn't, it wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives? Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? 
No, no, of course not. <laughs> they pull a bossing say. I better find yeah, out, or they might safe. find some way to cut my salary. <laughs> I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh well. That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Uh, okay. Alright, so looking at the picture, can you see anything strange about it? Someone's on the ground. Mm hmm. There's a little bit of black in the background, like. Just the dyed parts. That's that. just like the crinkles from the paper. Is that supposed to be a knife? It literally looks like a tomb. <laughs> yeah, that's like the broken knife. Oh, okay. He's already hit him in the back. Do you have two knives? What do you mean? Well, it looks because like it looks like the dude's like, huh, like this. He's well, holding him that... down with his hand. Oh, he's and holding is about him down with the hand. Okay. Do, do we do, have a picture of the do. actual instant? No. Okay, that's what I thought. Um... Broken tip was found in the victim's body, belonged to the murderer Joe Dark. Okay. Maybe we need to look at the gigantic stack. This one? Yeah. Okay. No, nah, this just was sell the people. Okay. That's a big stack for just a list of people. We got his autopsy report. Stabbed in the back. Died from a punctured heart and lung. Knife tip was found in the wound. Okay. It doesn't look like he's gonna stab him in the back, though. Are you, do you think we should do that, then? I don't know. Uh, let me see something else. If there's something else. What else? There's that handprint. I don't know why that's there. We don't really know anything about this. Yeah, we don't know anything about it. But we could examine it. A clear handprint can be seen on the leather cloth. The print belongs to Emma. I think I'll keep this information to myself. Very true. Nothing on the back side. What's this? It's now the... <laughs> This, so this is Emma's picture, and this is apparently the one that the chief detective drew his blueprint from the blue badger on. <laughs> okay. I... So much evidence. There's a lot of evidence for this case. This might have the most evidence out of any case. Okay, I think my best, the best bet is the autopsy report. Alright. Objection! Yay! I don't think it's for the reason you think, though. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? B but I still remember it just like it was yesterday! Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? So you're saying it's because it's his stomach and, like, he's being stabbed in the sure. front? Alright. Um, I think it's, uh, this part here? Hmm, I don't see what's so strange about that. That's because the drawing stinks! Mr. Wright, how could you? The act of making an innocent girl cry should warrant the death penalty. Wow. I guess he means I shouldn't shift the blame onto others. Yes, well, so long as the defense has learned his lesson. <laughs> Better take another look at the autopsy report in the picture. <laughs> I don't know. You don't? It's it's something pretty simple, and we've already kind of pointed it out. He's got his hand to his heart. Why would he? Well, maybe he's, like, trying to... Their feet connect. That's a terrible drawing. <laughs> she was traumatized. That's true. Uh, yeah, I'm giving them all the credit in the world. 
It's pretty good. It's not just like stick figures. True Dark wasn't bald. <laughs> That's the contradiction. <laughs> Uh, it's like his hands are levitating. It's like, no. Is it the knife? You can try that. Okay. Uh, it probably isn't. The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. I cannot, but that's fine. In fact, you don't even have to look closely to see that. But Mr. White, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Huh? Where could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Wah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time, but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? about a little something called falsified evidence. You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Order, order, order! Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, Please allow me once again to go over the events that took place the day of the murder. I love how they're just like, ah, screw Detective Goodman's thing. <laughs> the police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Do Joe Dark around along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I think that Marshall was chasing him. Neil Marshall or Jake Marshall? You both know Neil Marshall. <laughs> I... Isn't that what we're saying? <laughs> no, if you... He was... Dark escaped, Neil chased him. Oh, Neil and chased died. him. Okay. And okay. then was died. Was died. That's he was exactly dyed purple. I. I'm not lying. This man really was holding up a broken knife! If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. It was Edgeworth's knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's? Could there have been one? Emma's mistaken. There's another one. There is another. <laughs> uh... We don't have one of the thing. We don't. Alright. Broken knives don't just grow on trees. There's no way there was another one. Well, Mr. Wright, Your Honor, I believe the witness must be mistaken. I knew it. You really don't believe me! That flash of lightning burned an unforgettable image in her mind. One that's been torturing her ever since. There's no way Emma could be mistaken. If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, 
that you have some information about this other broken knife? If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Do you know what it is? Vase. Huh? Vase. You think it's the vase? Otherwise, it's the screwdriver. If anything's broken here, it's you. I thought the vase would huh? work! Because the vase broke! <laughs> I'm sure this must be all very amusing to you, Mr. Wright. But I may remind you that the fate of Miss Vanna Sky hangs in the balance. S sorry, Your Honor. Please give me another chance. Alright, it's the screwdriver. You think it's the screwdriver? Alright, let's make a safe state first off. What? Nope. <laughs> what? The screwdriver has to come in somewhere. The King of Prosecutors trophy! I'm like trying to look in like Gant's pockets to see if there's a <laughs> knife or something. Gant had a pocket knife. <laughs> oh! That thing. That thing. You think it's that? I mean, it looks like a knife. I mean, it's a suit of armor, but there's also the broken knife on the trophy that's no longer on the trophy. I didn't see that! We had the whole, like, Chinese story! I forgot! It's <laughs> been a day! That was okay. yesterday! No, I remember the Chinese story, I didn't think that that specific. It's like, oh, look, this thing's gone now. Like, that, uh, that'd be it. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the award ceremony. Ah! Ah! There you job. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the... The broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife! As we earlier concluded, the knife in the picture was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was all in the likelihood this award. Order, order, order! Neil Marshall was awarded Keen of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and a broken knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that... that can't be! Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the Keen of Prosecutors' award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed! That's what I was saying. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall! Oh. Oh! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died! That's true. What's going on here? Edgeworth's like, you're stupid. It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait! I... I remember now! I remember everything! Witness? As everyone does. Mr. Edgeworth! What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? <laughs> yep. I knew it. This picture? I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. I figured. Why would you only use half a page? All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside of me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. I wondered if the blue badger would play an important key role. <laughs> I, it, like, not really, but like... Yeah. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed to toward both of them. I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger! He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw a shadow! Really? Are you saying that, like, the blue badger murdered everybody? <laughs> this is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible! 
The head detective of criminal affairs didn't even design him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Stop! Please! Don't pursue this any further! Lana! What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this! I've already confessed to the crime! Why can't you just leave it at that? I wonder if... What? I wonder if Emma killed both of them. Or killed one of them. And she's locked Ooh, it away. That would be bad. I wonder if she's like, holy crap, I know all this, I don't want my sister arrested. Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. We never see the bailiff. I'm a little sad about that. <laughs> Maybe the bailiff's Maybe crazy. we do later on. When you say that man, I assume you refer to Joe Dark? Yes. At least... I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office reports. So then you... I panicked and rushed toward both of them. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall! She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that Dark guy knocked me down, all I could think was, I've got to help Mr. Marshall! I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Oh boy. What do you mean, you think? It, it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. In a matter of just a few seconds, Miss Skye was almost killed, then she witnessed a murder about to take place. A little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew it had to I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then what happened next? Yeah, she was 14. My gosh. Yeah. At 14, I was not that brave. Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him here. A but, dude? the head detective of criminal affairs brought fought up this hideous beast, and that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I had seen him somewhere before. Now I finally remember! Oh, brother. Just when you thought the thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, I'm sure I saw his shadow. I wonder if, like, Gant was wearing, like, a jester hat or something. <laughs> his shadow? <laughs> so you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? <laughs> well, that's good, at least. That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. Turning it sideways. What was it that Emma saw when the lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? I might just know, or I'm not sure. I might just know. Really? <laughs> I absolutely and positively have no idea whatsoever. Well, it's always good to be sure of oneself. <laughs> Apparently, it helps when trying to overlook one's failures. But I know what I saw! I'm not making this up! Mr. Wright, please! You've gotta believe me! Emma... The Blue Badger didn't even exist two years ago. So what exactly did Emma see? I've gathered all the evidence. 
All that's left now is to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Alright. So you actually might know? Yeah. The Blue Badger hadn't even been dreamed up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the Blue Badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us the mysterious Blue Badger look-alike. Alright. No! Behold! In her confusion, the witness mistook my attorney's badge for the Blue Badger. <laughs> The only person mistaking anything around here is you. Huh? This doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger! Oh, uh, give me a second here. Better take another look at the evidence from every angle. Alright. Alright. I think it might be the vase. You think it's the vase? It could be. The mysterious Blue Badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger! Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. So we can flip it this way, we can flip it this way, and we can also rotate it. Like that! What? Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the Blue Badger! Yeah! No! It can't be! There's blood on that vase, too, so... Yeah. Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious Blue Badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything! I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well, then. Please tell us, what's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? The location, the murder weapon, or the murderer? The... Location is still the same. Mm -hmm. There's no way that's different. Um... Mur it's either murder or murder weapon. You've mentioned that the jar has blood on it. It has blood on and it. And that you're like, it was probably that that stabbed him. I thought that, like, he broke it on his head. Or something. <laughs> that's not what the autopsy says, I know that's says, not what though. the autopsy says. But, like, to knock out... Um... Because the dude, the dude got knocked out. Remember, he had, like, the one blow before the dude died and blood everywhere. And then, um, the other guy, mm. serial killer man... <laughs> Joe Dark. Joe Dark. Um, That's the dumbest superhero ever, Serial <laughs> Killer Man. <laughs> um, yeah, Serial Killer Man. He got hit. Like, he had to have been knocked out. I think that face knocked him out. Alright, so you want to go for Murder Weapon, then? Sure! Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jo Oh, actually, wait. That was right. That was right. You didn't think that was right? No! Hang on, let's... Oh, all of them work. All of them all work? All of them work, yeah. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. Not only that, but she saw it at a very specific angle. Knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Skye's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, 
The struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body from Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through all the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and fl it flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have had to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf that the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? The suit of armor! Holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. See? Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the prosecutor's award. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless... I don't know if I can go through with this. Do it! Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall... You mean, Mr. Marshall died because of me? Oh, I didn't even conclude that until she said that. <laughs> no! That was, wow. Horizontal bar of blue and audacity. That was great. <laughs> I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. I knew she killed someone. Like, <laughs> accidentally. Not like, oh, she I knew killed she was somebody. a terrible person. No, but I knew, like, she blocked something from her memory because of something she did. Yeah. Or something she saw. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Uh, where did she go? What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall! How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her! Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out right. about what Emma did, wasn't it? <laughs> I assure you, Mr. Re Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane out I'm afraid you're going to have to have some proof. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Uh, evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes. It certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Does this mean Gant did nothing? Well... This can't be! Hmm. <laughs> Touché, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's a, a still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. 
For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. Somehow. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? Maybe it's on the... I gotta think back to the court record. Maybe it's on the base! The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's no way a dead person could tell the murderer's name. <laughs> Remember what happened in the second case? case. <laughs> well, it looks like this is as far as we can go with this. Mr. Wright, you disappoint me. I never thought you the type to let feelings cloud your judgment. Very fun. My feelings? If we overlook the victim's message, one he would have written with literally his last breath, then everything will be lost in darkness. The darkness. Where'd it come <laughs> from? <laughs> Perhaps that thing really is the clue I'm looking for. This is it. I can't afford any more mistakes. The slow music. <laughs> it is really Why slow. Why do we have to go back just for that? This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There's only one thing we seek, the truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. Why does everyone have all these sharp things in their locations? It's like, oh, I have this sharp garden hedge. Oh, I, <laughs> I have know. this sword. <laughs> this is the message from the deceased. Right. Now then, this is the message from the judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess that wasn't right. If a dead person left behind a message, it would have had to have been written for... for it would have had to be in written form, that's the only logical conclusion. You better be careful or you might wind up deceased yourself. Wow. Let's try this again. Alright, you said it, it was probably on the vase? Can we examine it? Zoom in. It's a happy face. It's a weird face. This is the true message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is the dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. No. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. Gotta connect the dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstances. The murderer's name. Can you see it? Connect the dots. Man. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove his client's innocence. That's why I, all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind.
Meanwhile, Emma is, like, passed out somewhere. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. But we still have this trial. See, Worthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. Hey, Mr. Org Player. Chief Gant, do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ah! Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. He still killed other people! Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. The devil's the Guess what, Gant? But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. Exactly. I was like, he's still... I'm afraid that's not important. What do you mean that's not important? He killed people! Therefore, Didn't... he's the killer! Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. The defenders of justice! What? Sailor Moon! We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Quick question, does that still happen these days? Are people sentenced to death? It probably depends on the country. How about America? I don't think capital punishment is still a thing. Okay. Know. Japan, uh, maybe, I don't I know. think lethal injections, I think, are, but, like, the electric chair is not. Oh, boy, the electric chair. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. <laughs> What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They may have sent an innocent man to his death? How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! Order! Oh, what order! Bobby? Order! <laughs> I was hoping for Bobby. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> the gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Oh, good. I was like, did he go and declare the verdict? Where this trial is headed, no one knows. So, Emma, how you doing? No, he's already. <laughs> <laughs> that was an hour episode. Oh my gosh. All right, I think that's a little more than a third of the way through the trial. <laughs> A third? Okay. Maybe oh. closer to half. Okay. All right. <laughs> if that we're including good. the credits and stuff, a third, though. <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Artie. And I'm Marty. Tune in next time. We, uh... Not sure where this is going, do are you? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I have my own theories, as always. But... Right. Yeah. I think, like, it's a blackmail all going through. Okay. All going through. Because Lana's like, shoot, my sister's a murderer, I need to cover this up. And then Gant's like, oh, I might be able to help cover this up if you obey every whim that I have. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fair. <laughs> that sounds like what it is. All right, like well, that's Marty's theory. Let's see if it's right next time. Until we meet again, have a great day and God bless.